This is David Zimmerman, and this is Meet the Biz. And today we have a legendary TV actress here. Um, I, I would say she is one of the most beloved TV characters ever from a show that was just one of the beloved TV shows, uh, Little House on the Prairie. Uh, and uh, by the way, well, instead of, uh, I'll just introduce her. Alison Arngram. Alison Hi. Arngram. Hi. Hi, it's me. <laughs> it's Alison in my living room. Ta-da, my living room, the windows, the books that I have. Yes, those are mouse ears. Those are um, mouse ears from uh, France. Uh, yeah, Disney, Disney France. This is Disney Resort Paris, and it was the 15th anniversary of the time I got these. That's where they sold it. So. Oh. Yes, I have mouse ears in France. It makes me want to go to the room because that's totally normal thing for me to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those ears want to make me go to Disneyland, but I guess we'll have to wait. We have to wait. We have to wait. That's right, to stay healthy. And, and I'm like looking at your, what is that, that poster back there? That is. Or a. I think it says happiness, wealth, and longevity, but yes. it was kind of like a Chinese themed party kit. So they could be lying because sometimes, they don't. <laughs> sometimes they, when you buy cool stuff that has ch Chinese or Japanese writing, if right. you buy it in America, sometimes it doesn't say what they tell you it says. Oh my God, <laughs> right? I yeah. hope it says longevity in it. <laughs> yeah. no, it says yeah, well, I won't go there. I have to have, I have friends who could read that. I have to have somebody over and go, yeah, no, it doesn't. <laughs> I have to tell you, uh, it last, we had a meeting the other day at Performing Arts Studio West, mm -hmm. and where uh, twice a week, all the staff gets together, and somebody, and we're calling all the students, hello, everyone, and <laughs> one of our students is binge-watching a little house on the prairie. Uh, Christy, yes, Christy, this, Christy. This, this, that's the prairie bitch. <laughs> Everyone is binge watching Little House because everybody's home and Little House it's on. I forget, I forget this. It's like me TV. One of them. I just found which station is running it because it changes. It's in a hallmark that it's over here that it's a. But it is. It's you can watch it all day. And um, yes, I've been binge watching it. And I've been binge reading the books. So um, yes, that's excellent, excellent idea. And I love that you are, it's, it, people have been so healing. And I don't wanna say especially in the arts because everybody is being so, a lot of people are being so amazing and healing, but the artists, I mean, you're coming out and every day reading um, online. People are doing some Really cool stuff. Do you know, um, um, uh, the camera, Patrick, uh, um, Stewart. Star Trek, yes, our captain, Sir, Sir Patrick Stewart. He is sitting there in his living room and he is reading a Shakespearean sonnet, one a day, sonnet a day. I'm really impressed. So he's amazing. But people are doing, uh, Dolly Parton is reading people bedtime stories. Ah, look at that. And so I, I, but I started, re I, I, I did it first. Uh, <laughs> I started reading The Little House. You did. And I did. I wanted to start, I was just going to read them by myself. Like, well, this will make me feel better. And then I went, ah, I'll do it on the thing. And I went on Facebook and then I started wearing bonnets and I read it every day. And then I caught hold of Dean Butler and I said, look, the book Farmer Boy is the second book. And that one's all about Almanzo, Almanzo right. Wilder's Child you got to do it. And he's like, I'm in. And so he just finished reading um, Farmer Boy. And so tomorrow I'll be, I'll be starting with the next book, Little House on the Prairie. And I'll go in every day. I, I will sit here until every book in this, until I've read all of them. I'm doing And then it. you'll read them again. <laughs> read them again. For the, yeah. <laughs> do you, but it, you know how brilliant and, and wonderful and loving that is. Because people will I, it's, I'm enjoying it. I just asked you, I said, so how much did you enjoy that? Because you looked like you were having fun. He's like, no, that's like the best thing ever. Um, and the comments, people are all commenting in the comment section and they're emailing us and going, 
thank you. This is like the best hour of my day. It's so calming. I'm, I feel connected to you guys, to Laura Ingalls Wilder. It's educational. I'm thinking about something else besides, oh my God, I can't go outside. <laughs> it's like, it's really, people are enjoying it. It's so good. You, it, I come on and uh, sometimes I'll just see you reading there and, and not, I, I just see your face and it, okay, I'm getting a little emotional. It's just, <laughs> it, I did. no, seriously, it's to see people that you know through this time and, uh, and we're getting through it. But it really, it's, it's really, it's showing a different way to connect and, and showing the love that we have for each other. And it's, it's encouraging because I know, okay, I have friends who've said, yeah, I'm not getting dressed. I'm in my pajamas, blah, blah. And I'm like, ah, no, I'm, I'm dressed. I, I get up and I shower and I dress. Yeah. And pretty much most days I don't do makeup and hair. Um, I, I, I did color my own hair because, um, a lot of people go, I can't get my hair done. I bought a box and I colored my hair and I fixed my nails. And so I'm fixing myself up. And so I look good. You know, it's like, when you, you look good, you feel good. Um, right. I look good. And then I go on the thing and, and it's a face of someone like, look, I don't look like I've been sitting in the basement for three weeks. Hi, see, I still look the same. There's some normalcy state in life. Allison still looks pretty much exactly the same as she did a month ago. And so I <laughs> I think that's a great thing. I mean, I get dressed at least the top half. <laughs> right. Okay, I mean jeans. I mean jeans and sneakers. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Or underwear. <laughs> Not today. I, I put more than underwear. I, I, did, I did wear like sweats and these really cool little slippers I got in France one day. I just had slippers on, but I had a lovely blouse. So. <laughs> Makes you feel like you're on vacation in France. Yes, 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 it does. Yes. yes. Um, so what is it like to be um, Nellie Olson? Right? It's so crazy because now when I started the show, I was 12, 12 years old. Now I had been acting since I was six, which is a good thing. And my family were all actors, which is another good thing because I wound up playing this character who was so mean. It's <laughs> just so incredibly stuck up, egotistical, greedy, selfish, um, awful, disdainful, mean, terrible to people, that people kind of got mad. Okay, they got a lot mad. I had people who said they hated me. Um, I had someone throw a cup of orange soda at my head during a Christmas parade. <laughs> um, for reals, I uh, had people, uh, two girls kicked me. I, the one time I went out to an event in costume, which I never ever did again, I went out and two girls uh, came up behind me and kicked me in the butt and knocked me down. Um, mm. So thing, people got really mad, and which on the one hand is kind of terrifying. Yeah. On the other hand, how good a job did I do as an actress playing this person who's designed to make people angry right. that they became so angry they lost control of the very sight of me. Now, had I been like eight or nine, this yeah. could have been really, really difficult because I would have been a, a young kid and, and trying to make friends and it might have hurt me that people were saying all these terrible things to me. But I was already like junior high and kind of like, ooh, villains, yay. And since I knew it was pretend, because I'd already been in TV shows and movies, and my mom and my dad and my brother and kind of everyone I knew was in TV shows and movies, I went, okay, it's not real. They don't really hate me. They, they hate her. They hate her. They hate her a lot. But they, <laughs> they don't really hate me. They don't even know me. So, whoo, because otherwise, that, then I would have been very unhappy. <laughs> wow. Wow. I, 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 you know, that didn't even cross my head. And, and you're, uh, wow. It's amazing how some people, I mean, but you're right, exactly. It's like, it shows what a, a job that you did, an amazing job. Is being oh, I mean, even when it was happening, like I said, I was 12, I had some, like, frame of reference. Well, my mom did all the cartoons. Mm. Gosh, my mom, my mother, a uh, very famous lady, she was Norma Macmillan, you can look her up. Norma Macmillan was the voice of Casper the Friendly Ghost. She was Gumby. Oh! You're freaking out, aren't you? Oh she God. was underdog's girlfriend sweet polly purebred i love that one and she was davy of davy and goliath come on goliath 
Yep. Oh my God. I She's everybody. That. She's awesome. And so I, as when I was really little, like six or seven years old, I would watch TV and half the cartoons were my mom. Um, it was like a Cocoa Puffs commercial too. So sometimes if she was in several commercials, <laughs> I could sit there for like two hours and everything that came it's out of mom. It's my mom. It's <laughs> my mom. Oh, mom's on. And mom was like, every for like an hour and a half, two hours on the TV, it was all mom. And that was really surreal and strange. Now, had I been a regular kid, it might have freaked me out that mom was a talking green ball of clay. But I knew I'd gone with her to the studio. I'd met some of the other actors who played. It. So I knew mom is not really a green ball of clay or ghost. It's, um, it's really cool. Mom goes to the studio and makes this happen. So um, I was used to seeing stuff like that. So when I was 12, 13 years old and these girls knocked me face down onto the cement, and I'm lying there as they're running away laughing, these horrible bullying girls. On the one hand, I'm lying there trying to figure out, okay, am I hurt? Did I break anything? Because <laughs> it's spent. I'm lying there going, how do I get up? Because costume, I made the mistake of wearing the costume and the petticoats. I like, couldn't get up. It's like a turtle. Um, and so I'm like, and so I'm thinking, but part of my brain, I still thought, man, what did I do? that they watched the show and as soon as they saw me went crazy and had to attack me and kick me. Man, that must have been good. <laughs> I must have really been nailing it. <laughs> so, you know, when I finally was scraped off the ground. I was like, well, yeah, that was pretty good. Wow. Wow. And maybe they, they, it was that. And also they said, yeah, she's the meanest. Well, I could be meaner or something. <laughs> And it was, it was sad because I had, I had a hot dog and a Slurpee and of course they fell and my father was very upset and he helped me up and he got me a new hot dog and a new Slurpee and said, we're going home. And uh, he, oh. he called and organized and said, I told you not to bring her there in costume. I told you. My dad knew he went, new is a bad idea. <laughs> and and um, he was right. He said, no, you can't go out in costume. He said, no, you're, you're scaring people. You have no idea how much these people hate you. <laughs> what is your... This is, what is your advice to parents who want to get their children into um, the biz? Ooh, it's iffy because it's hard. It's hard. You, you know this. Um, being an actor is not easy. It is not a simple thing. A lot of work involved. And then if you get lucky enough to actually be in a movie or a TV show, oh my God, the amount of work is insane. It's exhausting. And for adults, adults come home from work on a set and say, I, I, I got to go lie down. So kids, young kids, eight, nine years old, six, seven, or teenagers, you know, that's a lot of work to make a kid do. They do have restrictions, like, okay, after eight hours and one hour lunch, you got to go, and it's four hours work and three hours school, but, but it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. And being famous is a lot of work. So you want to consider, like, is your kid up to this? <laughs> do you really want to do this to your child? Um, obviously, there are kids who are like this. I mean, in the old days, there were kids who worked the farm with their parents. There's kids who went into the parents' business down at the store or the factory. So there's kids who are natural, like, yes, I'm a working a person. I put me to work. Um, but not everybody. And then the craziness of being famous. There are some kids who they're wired for Yes, I, I could go into politics. I enjoy dealing with the general public and talking to strangers. And then there's children who are like, I really am freaked out by having strangers yell at me in the street, and I don't want to do that. And you should definitely not make someone do that. Um, it is difficult. It can be hard. You know, Paul Peterson, our good friend Paul Peterson, who was on the Donna Reed show and created that whole minor consideration thing and has been one of the great fighters for child actors, one of the things he said is, remember that even if it seems like a good idea, like your kid really wants to do it and wants to act and, and you're not forcing them and being a horrible stage parent, you're being nice. Remember that if that kid becomes famous, you didn't become famous. If that show goes into reruns and they're famous like forever, yeah. you, no one will remember who you are. So years from now, when your kid can't go to Disneyland or, or as I said, can't get blueberry pancakes at IHOP because I get 
recognized at House of Pancakes a lot for some reason. <laughs> um, but you get a lot of free like, pancakes. <laughs> I, I, you would think, but no. Um, when your kid can't eat like a plate of pancakes in peace yeah. years later or can't go to an amusement park because they'll be mobbed and you still got to go back to your normal life. That's something you want to remember. The family of the child actor can go back to their regular lives. The child actor often may never go back to a quote normal life. They are always what you talking about, Willis. They're always little Arnold from different strokes. They're always Nellie Olson. They're always, I know, I mean, I was at least sort of forewarned against yeah. my family. Went, you do realize what's going to happen. Um, but, and I had friends who were famous, but I mean, if I didn't know, yikes could no one could have predicted how popular little house in the prairie was going to be yeah. and if you would come to any of us actors child or adult on the show back in the 70s and said in 2020 <laughs> people will still be sitting around binge watching little house in the prairie they will be talking about little house in the prairie they will be talking about nelly Olson all day long what we we would have said back then we would have said you're, you're crazy that's impossible. Why would people in 2020 still be thinking about little? And here we are. So <laughs> it's yeah. So that's something to consider. What happens if you get lucky and it works out and your child becomes terribly famous? Yeah. Are you prepared? Are they prepared to sign away the next you know 40 years? Right, right. Sometimes maybe better wait till you're over 18. Sometimes some people should wait. They should finish junior high and high school. I mean, it was really crazy. I, I stayed in SC. One of the reasons I'm sort of still sort of sane, I, I stayed in school. I stayed enrolled at my regular junior high school. Regular, oh, okay. So you weren't on the set when? We were. Well, it was, it was both. So right. I stayed enrolled. I didn't leave. I stayed enrolled at my regular middle school, as we call it now, or junior high. And I stayed enrolled at high school. So I saw my friends. So because I wasn't in 13 out of 13, every single episode, I had some time off. So I would be like at school for two weeks and then gone for two weeks and then at school for three days and then gone for three weeks and then at school for four weeks and gone for two days and right. this on and on. But it meant that on the set, I had my advanced schoolwork. I said, okay, we're going to cover this, this, and this. We're going to do this chapter. We're going to be tested on this. And I'd have my three hour school on the set where I would work on right. my homework and study. But then at some point, the next Tuesday, I'd be back at class with people I'd been going to school with since the third grade that I'd known for years. Well, it gave you some sense of real, so to say. And so I had regular friends. I had friends who'd known me long before I was on TV. Yeah. So they didn't care. So that way, because making new friends, yeah, kind of impossible. They all hated me. Um, so <laughs> Luckily, I had my old friends. Um, so people who were on shows that were that doesn't have like well, Melissa Gilbert, Melissa Sue Anderson, who were in every episode, they went back to Melissa went back to Buckley like for like a month, right? The break for hiatus. You get like two months in or so, and then boom, back to summer vacation. So she did not see her school friends very often at all. Okay. Well, you know, it's interesting too because I used to cast for Showtime for Penn and Teller's bullshit. Love that. And and I would get the, you know, the, the parts, not for the reality, but for, for the moments when they did the acting. Mm -hmm. So one time we had, they wanted some younger, younger kids to come in and audition. And I remember, and it was like, it blew my mind. These two actors came in, the two boys, and the mother looked at them and said, if you don't get this job, you're you're gonna be in your room for a week. And I was going, yeah. she said it right in front of me, like probably to make me guilty, but it's like, what did, what did some of these people do? So it's- Like the kid can control whether they get the part. I, when I was a little girl, I remember being in an audition and as a girl, and it was like her grandma, she was brushing her hair and she, she whacked her with that hairbrush right in the head. because she, she was just vile. And I saw people being just, hideous to their kids there are people who are just who are just awful people and who are monsters and some of them put their children in jail business i'm going to completely switch the conversation to something completely different what, yeah. what brings you joy oh <laughs> um so many things um 
Well, see, interacting with people and talking to people, my friends, strangers, and so which makes this current situation rather difficult. Look at Kat! <laughs> Speaking oh. of God, who's oh, never on camera. You're never on camera. What's your name? Oh, go eat. Say hi. Say hi. No, hi, just, honey. Hi, this honey. Is Morticia. This is Morticia. Her full name is Morticia <gasps> Wigglesworth. Scoot over because wah, she wiggles. Morticia. When she does not, yeah. She I wiggles. used to watch you on TV, Morticia. <laughs> That's right. I love it. And she's a black cat. She's a Morticia. Um, hanging out with my cat. Uh, for two drinks. Um, making stuff. Um, Obviously, interacting with people is hard. So now that's why this reading of the Little House books and doing all this crazy stuff like this, like Cameo and Zoom and all the things I'm doing, it's like, oh, I'm still talking to people. Hi. <laughs> so that's fun. Um, I like to make things. I like to cook. For instance, um, this weekend is Easter. I am making a lemon meringue pie. Oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> I was going to say that's my favorite. Can I come over? But I can't. No, no, I make a lemon meringue pie. I, maybe I should make a second one. I can have it like delivered to you. Oh, no, but I, I do. I make lemon meringue pie. It's, it's an old recipe. It's actually Gladys Knight. It's from a celebrity cookbook. Gladys Knight and the Pips Lemon Ice Box Pie. Wow. Gladys, I'm making the Gladys Knight official lemon meringue pie. <laughs> it's really good. Um, so it's with condensed milk and lemon juice. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I like to cook. I like to make things. Um, I like to garden. Uh, I got my tomato plants in nice. and, and I got, I'm sprouting some, uh, what have I got up there? Basil and lettuce and things. So it's, uh, it's I wish tomatoes, really. I have a cactus garden, so I can't. That's easy. Much I, easier. It's easy. I water once a week and I talk to if them I... and they, they smile back at me. And, and I've learned to cook more during the last, I, I've only ordered out once, only for Passover. Um, we, um, we had like, the kitchen was a mess. I'd had a lemon that like went bad and it's like, it was a huge cleanup operation. And Bob said, okay, that's enough for today. I'm getting a pizza. I'm going out. I'm getting the pizza. I'll be back. <laughs> and so we had pizza. Um, so yeah, so mostly I, see, I do cook and most of the time I do make dinner. Yeah. And then, you know, we, we would go out and order in. So now and then, you know, we're like, okay, time for Chinese or pizza ordering in. But I generally cook. So now I'm like cooking up a storm. <laughs> it's just completely crazy. It's like, what am I making now? It's like, right. uh, by the way, say hi to Bob. He is one of the sweetest guys I've ever met. Hi, Bob. Obviously, I like people named Bob. I married a Bob. So Bob. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously. Um, you you did a play based on on it called Confessions of a, a Prairie Bitch. Yes, yes. Well, it's crazy because people say, "Well, you have your one woman show in your book, so the show's based on your book." And I go, "Well, actually, the book came after the show." It's um, I've been doing stand up comedy since I was like fifteen. Mm -hmm. um, so I started doing that, and that evolved into different things. And then in two thousand two. I started doing this one woman show called Confessions of a Prairie Bitch, where I told I told the truth about it. I was like, yes, do you think I'm a bitch? Do you know what I have had to put up with? Do you have any idea how people have treated me? And it's hilarious. And so I just like spilled my guts. And it was so funny. People loved it so much. And I had a question and answer segment because I love doing that with little people filling out little cards that said, ask Alice of anything. Um, so I did that and it was a hit. And then I added video. And then I was doing this. And I'd been writing. I'd been saying, okay, I have to do my autobiography. So I'd been banging out some stuff. And a fabulous, Kent, Kent Wolf, uh, Kent D. Wolf on Facebook, a fabulous literary agent who now has his own firm and everything. Um, I like to think I contributed to that. Um, he happened to be at the show. Yeah. And I, next thing I know, I'm hit up on Facebook. Hey, is there a book to go with this show? And I went, could be. There, there, could, there could be. What do you do? And he said, well, I need like four chapters and like your bio and a photo and can we talk? And oh, look, I have four chapters right here. What a coinky ding. And I sent in my four chapters and he said, um, I booked some meetings and I was heading to New York that week. And then I got to New York and he said, well, I booked some meetings. And I said, okay. And I'm thinking, he found a little publisher. And he said, well, you know, um, Penguin, Harper Collins, Harper Collins, Simon and Schuster and rattled off like the 10 major publishers in America at which point I fainted, had to practically be revived. Um, and I wound up having a fabulous book uh, that I wound up writing and with HarperCollins. And um, it took months and months. And when they said go, it was like someone fired a pistol. 
I spent like nine months writing furiously. Then there was a couple of months of the editing process. And then there was like choosing the cover art. It was craziness. And um, then I had my book, which is Confessions of a Prairie Bitch, How I Survived Being Nellie Olson and Learned to Love Being Hated. Uh, well, you know, it's interesting. I mean, a couple of things, two things. I, I could talk to you for hours. You're uh, like this treasure chest of, of joy and knowledge. And um, two things I wanted to get out, a couple of things. Yes. Number one, Nellie Olson, The Wicked Witch of the West, and Darth Vader, right? Yes, and Hannibal Lecter, I think. I think. Oh, right. So you're, you're up there. Uh, and then the other thing, um, wh let's say we had, let's say the students are saying, what do you say a, for a student who is wanting to go out there and do it? Okay, well, I say, absolutely. If you really want to get out there and do it, do it. But like, brace yourself, because a lot of work, a lot of work. Um, there's lots of things to think of, and then there's the things to not think of. Sounds weird. So when you're acting, there's all this cool stuff like having a destination, having an inner monologue, which, um, and destination is my favorite thing when I finally found out what the heck that meant. It's like, oh, right, where am I going? <laughs> um, and sometimes it's literally, where am I going? Oh, I'm going to the kitchen to get the coffee. And that's what I'm thinking about. And sometimes it's, oh, where am I going? Um, oh, right, I want to get that boy away from more angles. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's really important because that gets you super focused. So the things like the 29 guys with the cameras and the lights standing like this close to you don't affect you because you're way too busy thinking about it. Okay. Um, so there's things to think about. Um, things to think about, how will you handle it if you suddenly eek become famous? Um, it, it can be really fun. Like, look, here we are talking. It's great. Um, I've had experiences from being famous. It was so much fun. It was hilarious. Um, and then I've had things where it's like, well, that's not right. Um, so you need to sit down with your friends and your family and go, oops, if I become famous, do we have a plan, like a safety plan for stalkers and crazies? And what are we going to do? And how are we going to handle going to things? And then it could work out. Uh, things not to think about. Try not to think too much about how many people are watching you. It's like having a big audience in a theater. Right. If I think too hard, I realize that literally millions of people are watching Little House on the Prairie, like right, right now, all over the world. It's all the time zones and the countries. And I sometimes like lie awake and think, somebody somewhere in somewhere on the planet is saying, I hate her. I hate that woman. Someone somewhere is just hating me right now. No, that would drive me insane if I thought about it too long. So, um, yeah, you have to, like, not think about that too much. Um, well, it's interesting, too, that I said <laughs> one of the most beloved characters because, in a way, you were loved for being hated. <laughs> That's cool now. You see, now everyone sort of come to their senses and realizes that they love Nellie. And now the character, have you noticed that villain characters are more popular now than they used to be? Shows would have like one villain character and it was sort of like, gee, should we go that far? Now it's like, oh boy, the villain. There's like several terrible people in like well, every show. When and I people was, love the villains. When I was younger, I would watch The Wizard of Oz every year. And I was watching it and all of a sudden, I started crying and my mom said, turn that off. She's scaring you. The Wicked of the Witch is scaring you. I said, no, she's not. She's dying. Was... Poor Wicked. Oh, you got to get together with my friend Andy. Do you know Andy Steinlein? Oh, he is obsessed with the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh, he I would watch it. He would cry because he'd go, they threw the water on her. He loved her. He loved her so much. I have to get you two together. Crazy. Oh, my God. Listen, I, I, I like I said, uh, you, you, I just, we, we need to like have a, um, a Zoom, um, you know, get a few people together and have a Zoom yeah. or, or something, <laughs> because it's just a joy being with you and visiting with you and and oh, my, Katie Kurtzman, our mutual friend. Katie. Now that episode, the episode with Katie and Katie and I talked about this. It's like the meanest thing I ever did as Nellie Olson was it was. I start a club and I tell Laura, her friend can't be in the club. He can't talk because Katie played this adorable little girl, Anna, who stuttered. 
and Laura befriends her. And of course I'm horrible and I'm picking on the stuttering girl. And then we have this club meeting and I said, well, okay, I'll let your stuttering friend in, but she has to say the password. And it's not a password. Like it's an entire poem. It's the whole Peter Piper picked a pep, which I can't even say actually. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers. I think of that. I can't even do it myself. Yeah. And I'm making this girl say Peter Piper pick, and she scored the book because she has a stammer. And I start saying, I can't hear you say it faster. And I make a stuttering girl cry. Worst thing. Here's what was also particularly awful. While I was doing it, I was like, yes. But I mean, when we kind of kind of go, oh, are you okay? And Katie was like, what? Yeah, I'm fine. She's like sobbing. And then she's like, yeah, turn a switch. Brilliant. So <laughs> we're doing this. And the reason it's creeping me out is when I was really little, when I was like uh, six, seven, second, first, second grade, I had to go to speech class after school. I, it was kind of cute. I had a lisp. I talked like Cindy Brady. I oh. said, my name is Allison. I could not say the letter F to save my life when I was about seven. So, and I had to go to speech class after school where they taught me to put your tongue here. Oh, so, oh, that's much better. Yes, how to say the letter S. And um, my best friend in speech class was a girl. This sounds terrible. This sounds like a joke, but it's completely true. I thought her name was Wanda for like a month. It, it was Rhonda. She could not say the letter R. And she said, I said, what's your name? She said, Wanda. And I said, I'm Allison. And, you know, they went on like that for a while until we found it was Allison and Wanda. Um, so I was friends with people who couldn't say certain letters and who stuttered and who stammered. That was who I was hanging out with because I was in speech class. So, right, like, I'm going to make fun of someone who's like, this is ever. So here I am in this scene screaming at and being totally abusive to a girl who stuttered. Well, I, I, was, I thought I was going to be sick to my stomach. Well, <laughs> it was like so awful. Amazing about that, hearing that story, because I've never heard that story. And I've, of course, seen that episode. I, I, to tell you the truth, I think if you, I mean, it's probably one of the top episodes ever of any television show. The music but, box is great. Oh, uh, but now- And it has, dream it has the dream sequence where also we put Laura in a dungeon and execute her by hanging. I have <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Really crazy episode. Very crazy. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, hearing that brings so, it makes me really want to watch it again now because it's like the, the, the conflict you must have had within yourself. Oh. Not oh. just that that you did have about. And then Katie, the you know what an, had this. And you know what an actress Katie is. So oh. when Katie's crying real tears and going, Peter, Peter, and you know, Melissa, Laura's going, you can do it, just slow down, honey. And she's going, Peter, Peter, and sobbing. You know how good she is. So that it was, it was, it was kind of horrifying to do. God. But then like they'd say cut, we'd be like, so let's go get ice cream later. You want to get a seven? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, we were little child actors. And we were like, la, 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 five minutes later. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for this. This has been a joy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I yeah. can make pie. I have to go make pie now. Oh my God, make pie. And, uh, and <laughs> once all of this stuff we're going through is over, we would love to have you come visit. Please, please, yes, yes. We have a hundred students and they, they love you. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody wash your hands. Stay safe. <laughs>